never seen Mjol this upset about anything. Mule the lioness is found wandering around town in Riften. In order to get her to join you as a follower, you need to earn enough favor with her. The easiest way to do this is ask her about the Thieves Guild, then when she wants your take on the guild, respond with the I agree completely option. If you've already spoken with her and are unable to move forward with her, you need to complete a miscellaneous objective to help a resident of Riften. You may have heard that you have to level up in order to continue with her, but this is not the case. There are several small quests to choose from. See the link in the video description for a list of all of the available options. To start her quest, choose the option you're not from Riften when it becomes available. She will take you through her backstory and let you know about her blade Grimsever, which was lost in a Dwemer ruin. Offer to recover it for her to begin her quest. If you can't figure out how to get this quest started, you can move ahead to the next step by recovering her blade first, then you can come back later and the dialogue option to return it will be there. Work your way through the ruins. I'm not going to do a complete walkthrough for this area, but keep in mind it's a very large Dwemer ruin. It's filled with the typical bandits, then Falmer in the lower areas. Work forward to the depths. It's worth mentioning that here there is a full set of Falmer armor opposite of this button. This includes the chest, boots, and bracers, each of which are a very rare find, and they're all right here in one place. Continue on through the depths to the gatehouse. Here you'll have to fight a Dwarven Centurion Master. Once you've defeated it, grab Grimsever off the nearby table. Astonishing! Return to Mule in Riften and let her know that you found her blade. She's now willing to marry you and can also be recruited as a follower. Once you have her as a follower, you can take the key to Aaron's house from her inventory. Everything in Aaron's house is now able to be taken rather than stolen, and you will not be guilty of committing a crime by entering or taking any item. Right away, the first thing you're going to notice about Mule is that she's very talkative. Some of the stories that she tells are interesting, but by the fifth time that you've heard them, you're going to grow tired of them. She'll also ramble on while you're talking to quest NPCs, which can interrupt the flow of conversation or make you miss out on important clues and information. If you want to drive yourself crazy, get her and use the multiple follower trick to have Cicero as well. You'll get dialogue every three seconds for the remainder of your playthrough. Mule will steal and she has a starting bow, so you'll want to get her the Dwarven Centurion arrow for a permanent upgrade to her default steel arrows. She's also essential, which means you cannot wabajack her to fix her level. Her stats are going to be level locked to where they were the first time you entered Riften. This can be a real problem on the console. On the PC, you can fix this by dismissing her and then using the disable and enable commands. Most essential NPCs can be fixed through marriage, but Miol retains her essential flag even after you marry her. This makes it difficult to use her effectively if you met her at a very low level. Properly leveled, she has a max level of 40 with 580 health, more than most followers in the game. For offensive skills, she has 49 skill in one-handed, but 100 skill in two-handed, and 78 skill in block. Mule only has 20 skill in light armor, but she has 100 skill in heavy armor. Her starting armor set is iron, so it's easy to get her to equip light armor, even without upgrading it. However, to get the most defense possible, you'll want to stick with a set of heavy armor. For weapons, she uses the same rules as most followers in that she'll equip weapons based on their material quality rather than their damage value or enchantments. She prefers two-handed over one-handed because of her skill, but here you can see she'll still choose a Daedric one-handed sword over two-handed weapons of lesser quality. She has the same restrictions as Cicero, where she can dual wield, but only if the offhand is a Forsworn weapon, pickaxe, or mage staff. Neil's also very picky about her jewelry. She will wear any necklace you give her, but she has an invisible ring in her inventory, which prevents her from wearing most enchanted rings that you give her. PC players, you can fix this with console commands, but those of us on the PS3 or 360 are not going to be able to get her to wear a ring reliably. 
So let's see Mule in action. Here I've given her a set of upgraded Daedric Armor. The enchantments are based around health and resist as those give her the largest benefit. I've opted not to give her a helmet since Daedric puts her well over the armor cap and there are no worthwhile enchantments for helmets to give to followers. The first setup we'll look at here is a one-handed sword and shield. I've given her absorb health and paralyze. With her high block skill, she uses the shield effectively and can keep herself from taking damage against this ancient dragon. Her damage output is really low with this setup, so if you're not having problems keeping her alive, I would suggest you avoid using this combo. The next setup is archery. Mule has 78 skill in archery and her arrows can be upgraded. However, you can see she still has issues with using an upgraded bow, and she'll switch to using her default hunting bow in many situations. This leaves much to be desired, and she ended up losing against the exact same dragon. You'll want to upgrade her arrows, but make sure to give her primary weapons to avoid having her use the bow as her primary means of damage. With her high two-hand skill, I was expecting a lot out of giving her a Daedric Warsword with Absorb Health and Paralyze. Watching her fight, I realized two-hand is subpar even for followers. She blocks effectively and doesn't take much damage. She ends up winning the fight, but it takes a very long time. For this reason, you should avoid getting her the giant club artifact as well. You're probably not surprised to hear me say that the most effective setup is to dual wield. Here she is with a Daedric one-hand sword in her primary and an upgraded enchanted Forsworn weapon in her offhand. She tears down the Ancient Dragon with ease in a matter of seconds, despite the fact that her one-hand skill is less than half of what her two-hand skill is. As you've seen in my other follower videos, you can give her Wind Shear and a Forsworn weapon to make her nearly invincible. Finally, Mjol is one of the most effective staff users in the game. She will use summon staffs effectively like most non-mage followers, but her nearly non-existent magic skill allows her to dual wield staffs effectively. Keep in mind, staff damage is nowhere near as close to weapon damage, so it's not an effective setup, but if you want her in the back doing spell damage because it works with your playstyle, she is one of the best choices for this. I also want to quickly cover Marriage and Eren. If you decide to marry her, avoid living in Eren's house. Even though you opt to live with her, going inside still has some of the same restrictions as trespassing. You cannot use the weight feature inside. There is nowhere for you to sleep. Both of the beds are twin size. Your better option is to get her to live in your house. If you move her to your house, she will set up a shop. She will also sleep alone in the basement with no complaints about all the corpses around. You'll never get the lover's comfort bonus when married to Meal. Aaron will come to live with you too, so be prepared to have this freak around at all times. You may want to kill him, but avoid doing this anywhere near her. If she discovers Aaron's corpse, she will become permanently unresponsive to any dialogue. Order of the odds. Stop right there. Someone do over here. Get out of here. I'm in no mood to talk. You cannot ask her for anything, you lose the ability to have her as a follower, she makes a horrible wife and tells you to get out of your own house. So find a way to kill him outside of your home without her being able to witness it or discover the body. You can also keep him around as an additional party member as long as you live somewhere other than Riften. In summary, Mule is a decent follower, she can take a healthy amount of damage, she's essential so she won't go dying on you, she has a pretty good level cap, nice amount of health, good weapon skills. She can dish out amazing DPS if you get her to use the dual wield setup. She has archery, she uses stabs effectively, and she'll steal so you can get her the arrow upgrade. She's very well rounded all around. Her main downside is the excessive amount of dialogue. She will talk all the time. Also, Eren becomes a major liability, especially if you marry her or frequently dismiss her. Keep letting me know who you'd like to see in the comments. As of right now, it's going to be one of the mage followers based on the votes. I'll let you know who it will be and when it will be posted by a notice to my channel. If you have any other notes or any other questions about Mule, leave them in the comments. I'm working on the patch 1.4 video and expect it up very soon, so keep an eye out for that. As always, thank you for watching.
It's good to see you again, dear. Yeah, have your head! 